Hey there, today we're gonna to talk about some best practices for saving your Clip Studio Paint files. Sometimes people have trouble losing their artwork. I find mostly it has to do with when they're by default saving to some kind of cloud service like iCloud, Dropbox, or even Clip Studio Paint's own cloud service. I don't find it to be completely reliable all the time. I mostly default to saving directly on my iPad. That's the safest way, especially if you don't have internet or if you have weak internet, Clip Studio Paint is always gonna be able to save reliably to your own iPad's file system. Then you can transfer that file to one of the cloud uh, services of your choice as a backup or to transfer to your computer and move on from there. So the first thing you want to just pay attention to is where you're saving. So I'm just gonna create an incredible drawing here. All right, I'm gonna click File and Save As and uh, I'll go ahead and name this. We'll call this amazing. There we go. Click OK. And that's going to bring up the iOS's uh, file system. Now, if I just collapse everything down to its essential folder structure here, you can see that on my device, I have my iCloud Drive enabled, which is likely the same on yours. I have my Dropbox enabled. And then I have this section called On My iPad. This is the section that I tend to save to with the most consistency. And this is files directly on your iPad. Now, the only downside of this is if you save something on your iPad and you drop your iPad in the lake or the pond and you cannot recover it, then that artwork is gone. However, by saving directly on your iPad, you're bypassing any kind of cloud upload service. And I find it saves very consistently and in a stable way. You just need to make sure that as soon as you need to back up or transfer, you do so, uh, so that you make sure you don't lose any work that's only on your iPad. When you install Clip Studio, it should have installed a Clip Studio folder in the On My iPad section. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save it right there on my iPad. And if I move over to the Files app and I go to the On My iPad section, Clip Studio, then I should see that exact same file, amazing.clip, right on my iPad. Now, if I want to transfer that to a cloud service, I can press and hold and click copy. Then I can move to something like Dropbox if I have it loaded and then select the appropriate folder and then paste it right into that folder. So for example, uh, I'll just go ahead and create a new folder here in Dropbox. So this is live adding a new folder. I'll call this uh, Ruben's Drawings. I'll go ahead and find that. And then I can either use the um, menu system, or in this case, actually, I'm tapping and holding, selecting paste. And now that file has also been uploaded to Dropbox, where I can access it on my desktop, for example. OK, let's see what happened behind the scenes in Clip Studio. So I'm going to close that. Well, it should have shown up in my Recents folder, which, sure enough, it did there. And also, when I create a new document with another incredible drawing, and I click Save As, this will be triangle. It should take me to uh, basically the same folder that I last saved something to. Now, I did have another folder here called Today and another one called S220, but it's still going back to the On My iPad section. So now, by default, every time I save, I don't have to be worrying about am I saving to the cloud or not. I just know I'm always saving directly on my iPad's storage system. Now let's take a look at Clip Studio's internal saving system. If I come up here to the Clip Studio icon and select Open Clip Studio, you can see that it has, has included these uh, last two files that I saved as part of its internal In This App tab. So I'm under Manage Works. And I will be honest with you, I never use this system at all. I think it's much slower than the file system. and um, I just don't think it's as consistent. But just so you know where things are going and how Clip Studio is organizing things behind the scenes, it will take whatever you have saved, whether it's iCloud, Dropbox, or on my iPad, and it's gonna show it to you here in these uh, recent works. Then of course I can just go ahead and you know double click and open, open amazing, yes. Okay, thank you, it's there. And both of those files have been saved. But this, um, Clip Studio in this app section doesn't easily tell me where these are stored. So because I'm working with a lot of client files, it's harder for me to stay organized 
uh, in a way that uh, helps me divide projects and things like that. That's why I usually like working directly from the Files app because that way I can start in the Files app, come here to Clip Studio, find the uh, file that I'm looking for and just open it directly in the, in the software. I find that's much, much quicker. But let's say you want to use Clip Studio's cloud service. Well, how does that work? Well, by default, if you don't know that this is happening, it, this may be saving directly to Clip Studio's cloud by default. Again, I don't use this. These happen to be a few that I happened to upload a long time ago that I don't even remember what's in my Clip Studio cloud at, some, at this point. But I'm signed in under my account, so that's important here. Um, and it's telling me that I've uploaded these five files to the Clip Studio cloud. Now I have these uh, two icons here. One is download as new, it has a cloud, a little blue cloud, and then download and overwrite uh, with a little red cloud. And what's the difference between the two? Well, I can see that all of these files have a blue cloud. That means that they're only in Clip Studio Cloud, but they're not on my iPad as accessible as an openable file yet. So I'm just gonna click this little cloud button and download this as new. And you can see up here in the download section, I have a little one happening. If I click that, it's telling me the progress of the download. And it's not very fast. It's still downloading Rope Swing 1, checking for updates. It's only four megabytes, so I don't know why it's taking this long. I have a clear internet connection. These are some of the reasons why I don't prefer to use this, but there you go, it's downloaded. Okay, all right, successfully downloaded, great. Come back here to manage works. Come back to cloud. And now this has turned red. What this is telling me that is that this file exists in Clip Studio Paints Cloud, but it's also on my iPad in this app. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select by title, and that was called Rope Swing. So there it is, Rope Swing. And two things have happened with this file. This is telling me that, um, okay, that this is being synced and that the sync is on. So when I turn this little switch off, it says removing selected files from items to be synchronized, would you like to proceed? I'm just gonna say no for now. Let's see what happens with the default functionality. I'm gonna double click this uh, rope swing file. This is a little animation I made some time ago. I'm just gonna create a new layer there and just make an obvious shape here so we can see from a distance what's happening. I'm gonna save, close, Come back to Open Clip Studio. All right, let's come find my rope swing. Okay, so you can see the thumbnail has updated with this big red circle. And I'm gonna come here to Cloud. And it's not updated here. And it says there's no updates. Why? That's because I haven't pushed the changes back to uh, my Clip Studio Cloud. So I'm gonna come back to uh, Return to Paint, sorry. <laughs> Open Clip Studio, Manage Works, find my rope swing, and I'm gonna sync this. And we'll say sync now. Come up here to my manager, and it's telling me, okay, it's uploading. Again, I find it's kind of slow. I have fast internet here. I, I, just, I just think it's the way the service works, personally. All right, that's updating. Okay, now it's checking for updates. Okay, no updates found. We can come back to Manage Works, Cloud, and uh, now you see that my cloud file also has the red circle. So we just did this kind of sync process, which will happen automatically at some point. I forced the sync, uh, as you saw me do when I said sync now. I just, I'm not quite usually sure what is where when I'm using Clip Studio's cloud service. Now, uh, let me show you what happens now when, um, when we need to push changes from the cloud back onto Clip Studio. So for example, what I can see from here is that one of my files in the cloud is on my device, but four of them are not. So I'm gonna come to in this app, and uh, if I go ahead and let's make another change to this. And we'll just say, uh, set a little crosshair there. File save. I'll close that off. So you can see that this is now has the updated thumbnail. 
the cloud does not. Still the old one, all right? But I can push these changes back onto my device. So I'm gonna select that. Do you wanna overwrite device data with iCloud data? Okay. The following works have been changed. Do you wanna discard your changes and download these works from the cloud? Yes. Again, I'll check my progress here. Make sure you check the progress because you might think something has happened or is happening and it's frustrating to not see any updates or changes, but that's because a lot of people haven't checked the uh, communication management tab. So it's checking for updates. All right, there it goes. Redownloading from the cloud. Going back to manage works in this app, and sure enough, it's back to the cloud version. I think it's a lot of steps, uh, and they're not super quick, and I'm not quite sure what state things are at all the time. So this is why I don't choose to use it. Um, but lastly, if I delete this from my in this app, delete, and I go back to cloud, this has now turned blue again because it has detected that this file only exists in Clip Studio Cloud, but not on my device. So I hope that's helpful to understanding how, you know, the basics of how Clip Studio's uh, cloud service works. Once again, I'm, I'm kind of rarely in the actual Clip Studio. This is the official Clip Studio where you can open different applications. On the iPad, only Paint is available, but on the desktop, you'll see Clip Studio's other applications listed here. This is meant to be kind of a hub for all your work. So maybe for some people, it works great. Uh, for me personally, I am mostly working directly in Clip Studio Paint using the iOS's Files app, uh, and I'm mostly working on my iPad locally to my device. I don't need internet, and I find that um, when I'm saving things, I, I don't lose anything pretty much because everything's saving directly to my device. And as soon as I get home or as soon as I'm on, I'm on Wi-Fi, I'm transferring those files to my desktop or to a cloud service. Now, if you don't see the service of your choice here, you can click this little menu, select edit sidebar, and whatever cloud services you have installed on your device are we're gonna show up here in locations. So Google Drive or Dropbox will not show up until you install the Dropbox app or the Google Drive app, launch it, sign in, then come back to files and it will show up here. So in this case, um, I have installed Dropbox, the official Dropbox app, I've logged in, made sure I can see my files, uh, my folders. Then when I go back to my files app, the Dropbox service will be available to me. I can enable that and now that will not only be available to me in my files app, but also any other apps that um, have access to files, whether it's Procreate or Clip Studio or anything else. And lastly, um, you should also remember that as you, you know, create your artwork, uh, take advantage of the quick share process, which I use all the time to communicate with uh, um, you know, clients, and this lets me um, send files directly to my iMac through AirDrop, uh, through messages I can copy and paste and do all kinds of stuff right from, right from quick share. All right, I hope that's helpful to understand where your Clip Studio Paint files live on your iOS device.